What's up, everybody? I'm Sonny the Badger, and welcome to my Friday free ride. A beautiful morning here in Southwest Florida. I'm out early because uh, Florida's starting to open up a little bit, so I had an appointment for this morning. But anyway, on this week's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about Florida open up, and then we're going to talk a lot about it being a big couple weeks for Harley Davidson as a company. So let's get started. years ago I worked for a tool company and the tool company brought in a CEO from Frito-Lay. Well let's just say he wasn't very good at leading a tool company so I hope a shoe guy is better at leading a motorcycle company than a chip guy wasn't leading a tool company. But I'm all for giving somebody a chance. Let's see what you got man. So the other big announcements they made was, first off, they're going to stop production of the CVOs for the rest of the year. So, if you have a 2020 CVO, I'm going to guess your production numbers are going to be lower than normal, which is kind of cool, at least in my mind. I personally like, like, limited production things. I guess that's why I own two CVOs. Just something about knowing like I ride a one of a thousand made bikes that I dislike. So if you have a 2020 CVO, congratulations. Your production numbers just dropped. They also dropped three bikes from the Softail lineup. So they dropped the FXDR, which they've only had for a few years. They dropped the Deluxe which is like an iconic classic bike. That one surprises me a little bit. And then they dropped the Breakout, uh, which was their fat tire chopper looking bike. And personally, I really liked the Breakout till a couple years ago when they changed the gas tank. 
They put that small gas tank on with that big wide back tire. And just, in my personal opinion, it looked like crap. But I really liked it when they had the regular full-size gas tank on it. I thought it was a pretty sharp bike. But honestly, they already have a fat tire bike in the Fat Boy, so they really don't need another one, right? So I kind of get that. The truth of the matter is, is when I worked for Harley, we didn't sell that many soft tails anyway. The soft tails we did sell were the Fat Boys, and then the Heritage led the way. So we didn't sell all that many Deluxes, although the Deluxes were popular with the ladies. Uh, we didn't sell all that many. Uh, we didn't sell that many breakouts. And uh, the FXDR, I don't know how many of those sold. I don't see very many of them out. So I'm gonna guess they didn't sell a whole lot of those because those were kind of a, those were a new bike for Harley. And for me, it was almost like a crossover between like a Dyna and a V-Rod. So I don't know that they were all that popular anyway. So I guess I get cutting that one for sure. But anyway, I think it's probably good that Harley's cutting some fat, streamlining their operation, making fewer bikes. I think all of that's good. I've said it in videos before. Personally, I think Harley should cut production and make it where the bikes aren't overly available. I mean, I remember hearing people talk about when they would put money down for a Harley and they would just wait to see what they got. So I'm not saying we need to go back to those days, but we could definitely cut production and uh, cut the models and streamline the operation. That seems to be what always happens, right? Businesses see success and then they start overproducing and the quality drops and the attention to little details, all that stuff changes and drops. And then all of a sudden, you notice know, sales start declining, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, I don't know that it's a bad thing. I know they also made some changes as far as the accessories go with some of the touring bikes. I think they're putting on all the touring bikes, they're putting their ride control system. And they're also putting the larger stereo in all of them. We'll see what happens. They're also going to change their release date on new bikes. So used to their release date was, I don't know, August, September, somewhere in there. I think they said they're gonna move that to the spring, which makes sense, right? Because that's when the majority of the US, that's when their riding season starts. Unlike us in Florida, where our riding season starts in November. makes sense but I mean that basically means that we're gonna have to wait for the Pan American we're gonna have to wait for the Bronx which I was looking forward to both of those bikes and then uh, I mean, we're gonna have to wait another what six months eight months for new releases so that sucks because I always look forward to seeing what's coming out new but I get it it makes business sense